Hey friends, February 1st, 2011, and as promised, my video on S35. Uh, act as cited as the Gun Show Background Check Act of 2011, also known as in previous Congress's Gun Show Loophole Closing Act, also known as in previous Congress's Mandatory Gun Show Background Check Act. Um, as if you're looking at the bubble above my head, this bill has been floating around the halls of Congress now for over a decade. It seems like uh, every time someone introduces it to that uh, particular session of Congress, a uh, bill goes into committee, dies in committee, come the next session, someone quick grabs the paddles, zaps it back to life, and away they go. I'm going to read to you the congressional record summary on it from 2009 and then I'm just going to add a couple points to it because it doesn't discuss it in the summary gun show loophole closing act amends the federal criminal code to make it unlawful for any person to operate a gun show unless such person has attained 21 years of age is not prohibited from transporting shipping or receiving firearms and has not violated any federal firearms requirements, has registered with the Attorney General as a gun show operator, and has provided a photograph and fingerprints, has not concealed material information, nor made false statements in connection with the gun show operator registration, and notifies the Attorney General the date, time, and duration of the gun show, not later than 30 days before the commencement of such show, and verifies the identity of each vendor at the gun show. Try reading that fast. Imposes record keeping requirements on gun show operators and criminal penalties for failure to register as a gun show operator and maintain required records. Grants the Attorney General authority to enter the business premises of any gun show operator without a showing of reasonable cause or warrant and to examine the records and inventory to determine compliance with the act. Increases criminal penalties for serious record-keeping violations and violations of criminal background check requirements. Authorizes the director of BATFE to hire additional investigators to carry out inspections of gun shows. I'd like to add to that that the bill uh, is going to require any transaction of a firearm to go through an FFL and uh, without getting into the you know dotting the I's and crossing the T's uh, it's pretty much the consensus that this bill would actually uh, eliminate private transfers of firearms like if I'm at a gun, just happen to be at a gun show by myself and I'm not a vendor. I'm not there with a table or nothing. But I'm, you know, I have a, you know, I'm carrying a gun or whatever. And uh, let's say I see a gun that I want to purchase, but I don't have the money. But another person in the crowd who's also not a vendor decides he wants to buy my gun. So it would be technically a private transfer between two individuals. Um, you would still have to go through an FFL. Someone also said that uh, the way the language is written, uh, if you were to have uh, bought ammunition, that it would also have to go through the FFL. But I'm reading the language, and I don't see where it says ammunition. It just says if any part of a firearm transaction. Uh, it doesn't say an ammunition transaction. So I don't think that's the case. But anyway, link is below. We've seen this bill <laughs> It's got some heavy mileage on it. Um, well, I'm just going to hope this one dies again. I don't know how, it's like a zombie, you know? You keep shooting it, and it falls to the ground and gets back up, and it won't go away. So hopefully maybe this time around we'll get rid of it once and for all. Until next time, peace. God bless you all. God bless the Republic.